Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us from, coming to us from Brave Alice Games. The developers of RPG stories, who which uh, is going to be grit, going to be gearing up for its newest expansion, Wrath of Devs. The one, the one and only Ais Angelai. I was I, perfection. Thanks for pronouncing my name. Um, how are you doing um, today, man? Or tonight? I'm doing. Uh, it's tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, and I'm. I mean, this is an honor. Um, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I mean the monastery. Yep. So, so one of the traditions around here with every newcomer is the humble beginnings, in a sense. All right. So, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. All right. So, um, I'm from Greece, and back in the '90s, um, nobody knew what Dungeons and Dragons was. But I was lucky enough, my cousins uh, lived in the UK, so they brought in the second edition Players Handbook with them uh, one summer uh, that they visited Greece. And I started playing second edition. I still play second edition to this day with my friends. So when it comes to work or um, pe new people I meet, okay, it's um, other editions, fifth edition probably. But when I run as a dungeon master, I still run second edition. I guess, it, I mean, it it changed my life completely. Um, and after I first played um, with my cousins, it was in the um, it was a Dragonlance campaign. So I've never I've never played Forgotten Realms. Um, that that's weird. So it was Dragonlance Greyhawk, and then the same summer I met some other people. Uh, they were playing Dark Sun. Uh, and that was like an amazing setting as well. And so when the winter came and, you know, my cousins left and I had nobody to play, I started DMing. And since then, you know, it, it changed my life. And I, 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 I was, you know, the, the guy at school that was going home to study and learn English because we didn't have translated books um, to understand the rules and play with friends and then when I went to the university again so it was like a Stranger Things kind of life I was the, the, the little nerd that was playing Dungeons and Dragons and my mother thought I was in a cult or something uh, and yeah uh, to this day it, I mean like till three years ago it was just a hobby then I created Brave Alice Games and RPG Stories VTT, and it became part of my um, everyday job. And yeah, I'm in love with the with all tabletop RPGs. Um, I had my moments with uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Call of Cthulhu and Pendragon. I don't know if you know this game. I know, I know Pendragon. Yeah, but a good D and D session is always the best, and at least in my opinion. So yeah, here I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, with the, with that said, when when it comes to RPG stories, which is I'd say the flagship of what of what you guys are doing, yeah. how did that how did the idea of doing this sort of um, 3D VTT approach come into being? All right. So, um I'll be honest. <laughs> so here's the thing. I was working for many, many years as a senior producer in uh, video video developing gaming companies. So I was in the video game industry. Um, I had some experience. I had a budget that, and I thought to myself, why not trying to do something on my own? Um, I gathered the team, the devs that I wanted, because, you know, from uh, several companies that I've worked, I knew some people that I really appreciated. So uh, it, to my eyes, I brought in the dream team, the, the best I knew. And 
I was thinking that creating a game, it's pretty hard because, you know, the, the, the video game industry, it's really competitive. It's really hard to come up with an idea and really sell it. So I was thinking of a product, like a flagship product that will get us in. And since I was like really passionate with tabletop RPGs, I thought back then um, it was only Tailspire when we started it, out there. So I thought, all right, this Tailspire thing, it's amazing. Why not create something with more realistic graphics, something that will support all games, not just indie, and try to get in the market. So we, the idea was to create, and that's what we did eventually, to create like a really big uh, 3D world builder that will be really easier than our competitors to build and then be able to call your friends and play online. We got a little bit unlucky because uh, when we did that two years ago, at the same time as we were running our Kickstarter campaign, but then two other 3 DVDs appeared <laughs> in the same month. <laughs> so it was like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, eventually we got funded. Um, I can proudly say that uh, from 2022 back then with you know our two competitors haven't yet managed to release their product so yay we we, we won uh the battle that battle and yeah we are out that's how it started basically and to be again honest the the idea came in my mind we were playing dnd in roll 20 and we were getting disconnected again and again and again and again. Uh, and I was like, okay, I need to create something that <laughs> you know, I will enjoy. At least if it fails, I will have it to play with my friends and I will be happy with it. So yeah, we, I called my producer and said, that's the idea. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm not surprised that, that there were disconnection issues since, um, it's amazing how old the code was that um, Roll20 was running on. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. they've only yeah. updated the code, like, in the last few months. Yeah, I know. I mean, if, you, if you've if worked with code before, you could feel it while playing in Roll20 that everything is, like, you know, <laughs> ready to collapse uh, back then. Uh, now it's, it, it has improved for sure. Uh, but yeah, the, a lot of disconnections. And I mean, okay, it's it's a browser-based uh, program. It's, I mean, if you don't have problems with browsers, it, it's almost impossible not to. So we get it. And and I think that's why Foundry had such a success. They avoided the um, browser side of things. Yeah. yeah, Foundry is its is its own thing. Um, yeah. there it there are there are some weirdness moments with Foundry depending on what kind of game you're you're running. Um, but I do. It's fun. It's funny that a lot of this started with the idea of doing th doing three D VTT because um, early. Earlier on, um, last year, I had ta I had talked about Hasbro wanting to do their wanting to do their own with D with D and D doing an official virtual tabletop and it using 3D. And I had I had said at the time that um that thing wasn't go wasn't going to work out. I in, par in part because they tried that before back in 2008 and it didn't work. It never even got off the ground. And there was also the fact that they were used that they were um, using, I think, on Real Engine Five. They still do, um, and that's that's the main issue. So I'll tell you my opinion. I I might be wrong, but if I had to to bet my life, I'd say that they they will probably fail again, because. But again, I might be wrong, and. You know, this will be recorded and everyone can make fun of me. I will accept it. But if I had to guess, I'd say that this will go wrong for several reasons. So the first one is the Unreal Engine. Because when it comes to Unreal, although it's an, um, it's for sure it's the best engine out there. All right. But Unreal Engine means um, high spec PCs. End of story. So yeah. when it comes to 
tabletop RPG players, not all of them are gamers at the same time. So my computer is is a monster because I play games, I develop games, I have a PC, and most DMs do have good PCs. But my players, my, I mean, outside of work, right? My friends that we play Dungeons & Dragons Online, they have laptops from, I don't know, 2008. Potatoes. So, and, yeah, and they struggle. And I get it because not everybody is a gamer. So when it comes to a 3D VT, if you want to really hit the market and hit all the players that play online, basically you're forcing them to buy new computers. And, you know, that they're not gamers. Most of them are not. And they don't spend, I don't know, $2,000 for a PC every three years because they want to be up to date and things like that. So that's the first issue I see. The second is that they did a huge mistake with OGL. They know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, um, well, they know it. They've been they've been doing they've been um trying they've been trying to play catch up ever ever since that move since everybody else took advantage of that weak of that weak yeah. point and started making moves on their own. Yeah, exactly. And the, another problem that, which we have as well is that every player out there that plays tabletop RPGs has a different style. So whatever you do with your 3D VDT, you will get new requests every day. So I'll bring one example. So when we released the multiplayer, our characters couldn't walk through walls. So we had colliders. So if you were in a dungeon and you were walking with your character because we have 3D animated characters, it basically it's like playing Diablo, let's say. So you couldn't walk through walls. And then you get a request like, yeah, but what if I cast Passwall and I want to be able my character to go through walls? So you go back and change things and then somebody else is nagging about it and says, hey, my players go through walls and they see what's next, do something. So as designers, game designers, we constantly try to find manual ways for the uh, dungeon masters to build their environments. So you have to give like a not a way to build and not a way to play, but also super manual ways for super detail for each individual because everyone has a different style and the requests are endless. So what they are trying to do is creativity T that will 100% follow the rules and nobody plays with the rules. I mean, I don't know a single player that plays 100% by the rules without nobody plays Uno in... as written. Yeah, n nobody. So, and with D and D, that's amazing. I mean, nobody plays the, the game exactly as it is written, and it, you're not supposed to. So, when you have rule sets that you know, if you create a druid, this is the path. You cannot do anything else. You cannot go to your character seat and customize everything. So, that means they will need to customize everything, and that's when it it's, it it starts to be hard. The third reason I think that gonna fail is because of RPG stories and multiverse and Tailspire and all these different treatabilities we are trying to create um VTTs for that support more games. So this week, uh, the next week, not this one, we are introducing in RPG Stories VTT before our next Kickstarter campaign, before the expansion, uh, a new dice panel that has uh, that supports Alien RPG, Walking Dead RPG, Hero Quest board game, uh, Blade Runner RPG, basically all free leaks the, games. Yeah, the um, except except for Hero Quest, all the ones you mentioned are using the Year Zero engine. Yeah. So what is happening is that you know people around. I, I'm not saying that everyone will come to RPG stories. I hope so, but there are amazing VTTs out there that uh, Foundry, for instance, if we go to 2D. Um, by the way, Foundry is also introducing 3D now. Uh, so there are VTTs out there that support more games, and usually D&D players play other games as well. Mm -hmm. And it would be weird if they release a VTT that will cover, um, I don't know, games from Chaosium or Paradox or World of Darkness or whatever. So, you know, the, the competition out there exists, and it's real. Uh, one thing we are proud is that we are for sure the only uh, 3D VTT that supports, you can build anything. And yeah. by anything, I mean, 
we, we say, and that's a big marketing mistake on our side, we say that we, we support fantasy, modern and sci-fi, but that's not the case because when it comes, for example, to sci-fi, you can build almost anything you need to play alien RPG. But at the same time, we have the models to for you to build Blade Runner or Cyberpunk or different um, styles. It's not just a generic sci-fi. Same with fantasy. So when it comes to fantasy, it's not about dungeons only. You can really build a medieval world and play, I don't know, vampire dark ages. So with such a competition there and with small companies like Brave Alice, so we made a, a small, simple example. We made uh, 70K in a first Kickstarter. That was our budget. So with that amount of money, which is not a big budget, we created everything. We really hard work. So there are teams out there that, you know, indie teams that create amazing products. Foundry start, started like that. Uh, Tailspire were two developers. That, that was it. And, you know, people appreciate that. So when it comes to big companies, they have a lot of meetings. They have a lot of things to consider. And, you know, it goes slowly. So we hope that they won't destroy us. <laughs> That's... Um, yeah, that's our hope. But if I had to bet, I agree with you that they're going to fail. Mm -hmm. The well, for for me, one of the other um, one of the other things was they wanted this. They wanted that virtual tabletop to be compatible with um, co with current day consoles as well as PCs. And I may I may be sounding a little arrogant with saying this. Not that that ever stopped me in the past, but if somebody wants to play a fantasy role-playing game experience on a console, they'll play they'll play a full-on video game. They'll, exactly. they'll play Dragon yeah. Age. They'll pl they'll play Divinity. They they might play Baldur's yeah. Gate three. Um, yeah. They'll go they'll go with those. It's yeah. it's it's more. This is more of an issue of certain formats. Are just not compatible with with certain types of games. This is yeah. the reason why genres like RTSs and grand strategies and four and four X don't work on consoles as well as they do on PC. Yeah, ex that's exactly the case. And also, so if you go out there, you and you check the all the comments um, in other VTTs and other Kickstarter campaigns and in our Discord server everywhere. You'll get the feeling that people really need rule sets, M meaning like I'm playing in roll 20 and I click the die and the D20 rolls and at the chat I get the rule and the damage because I clicked on my longsword. You get the feeling that you, people need rule sets. And that's exactly what our campaign, our current campaign, The Wrath of Devs, is all about, introducing rule sets. So... But that's not the case necessarily because we've run a lot of um, questionnaires out there. So 50% of the players would kill to be able to play around the table with no PCs, no online, no microphones, no Discord, no anything. They can't, so that's why they play online. Okay, so it's a solution. But the more you give them, the more technology you give them, they feel that you destroy the game. And so it's 50-50. Um, and there are a lot of people that prefer the theater of mind. So they just connect, they play, they might use some visuals. And we see the analytics of how VTT, how people um, is using it. And they don't, most of them don't go in like, like huge detail. They might like open the 3D scene, place a house, two characters out of the house and play. There are others that they might build, like we have fans that they build amazing things and you say, oh my God, how how did you build that? <laughs> but well, yeah, I think- It's the same principle where you have some people who build a simple house in Minecraft and then some people who will rebuild the entirety of the Enterprise D. Yeah, exactly. And since we support, um, we have Steam Workshop support, we can see what people is building and sharing. Sometimes I call my producer and say, how did he build that? Do, do we support these models? I, I don't even know how they find a way to you know, create these things. Um, but yeah, 
the, the people who prefer theater of mind are more than all the others. You just can't see them because they're, they're not that kind of people that go and post and um, talk online or comment or, you know, things like that. They just play the game. Uh, so, yeah, trying to bring everything in an order in a game like D&D where people play their own way, it's tricky. And that's why we are trying to give the tools to the players to be more theatrical, to uh, make jokes inside the game. We are slowly giving features like that. Um, and it works. They prefer it instead of, I don't know, um, a super AI way of building things. Yeah. And they, yeah. I know that more recently Hasbro's um, higher ups have talked about wanting to implement AI into D and D and Magic, and I'm like, great, great job, great job in um, <laughs> in trying trying to go for a hail mary and loot and losing, idiot. Because yeah, <laughs> obviously doing AI art with Magic the Gathering that's going to piss off all the secondary market, and that's a very large market. And using it with D with D and D is a one, just like with last year, just a fundamental misunderstanding of the uh, of the audience. And for me personally, I remember I remember when a f when some friends of mine had tried to sell me on using ta using Tailspire, and mm -hmm. I had I had said, "What is in there is great from what from what I'm seeing, but and it's a big old but." A lot of those ones very much skewed to just D and D, and that's not what I do. <laughs> in fa yeah. in fact, the majority of the people at my table are either disillusioned or have no or have no interest in doing yet in doing yet another five E campaign. Yeah. Since I've re since I've revived my actual play series, Cloister the Dice, we have run. Emberwin, Lone Wolf Fists, and we are currently running um, Sword World. All three oh, of those nice. are as far as way as far removed as you can get from D and D. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly my point with D and D one and the VTT Wizards of the Coast is trying to release. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is playing something different. It's not about D and D. It's not about D and D anymore. The Dungeon Dragons will always be the king and probably will always be the number one choice when someone gets introduced to tabletop properties. But slowly, slowly they go away. Yeah. Um, and they they want to try different games. So even if you're a D&D player, you want to play other games. And since RPG Stories, for example, exists, let's talk about us <laughs> and promote us because I've been referring to other VTs. <laughs> yeah, um, so with, since, yeah, with RPG when, Stories, um, yeah. since you're using... I think I think one of the, one of the big hangups I've seen some people have when it comes to it is this idea that they that in order to use it they'd have to get a bunch of diff a bunch of assets and the cost would be would be astronomical. Oh. But I get the feeling based on what you're saying there's already a healthy amount of assets on the Steam workshop and beyond that beyond that all that somebody would have to do is uh, is just Pick and choose what they actually what they actually need. There's already a decent foundation. Am I correct? Well, not exactly. We went even further than that. So what we are doing, and that's something um, like different from all the other three DVDs out there, is that we don't create the models. So we don't have like a um, a pipeline of three D modelers uh, constantly creating new models and implementing them in, in. So what we do is that we um, buy assets from other artists, not AI. <laughs> um, we buy assets from other um, artists um, and we implement them in. And what we, what we have right now after two years is more than almost seven, more, let's say more than 6,000 models in, plus all the combinations that you can do and everything ex that exists in uh, Steam Workshop. Plus, what we do is that we get the models, let's say that we buy a package of houses. So what we do 
is that we implement in the software the houses so you can um, simply choose from the library the house and place it in the 3d scene as it is rescale it make it smaller bigger rotate it all right yeah copy paste it so you can get all these houses and like recreate a, um, a village all right but at the same time our 3d modelers take the walls the floors the windows everything and they create modular pieces so if you want to take every little piece of that house manually and build like in minecraft whatever you want to build with these walls these floors these windows these doors you can do it so everything we do in rpg stories and that also in the world builder and in the multiplayer has an auto way to do things so you can just you know uh with a, a single click draw rooms or place 3d models in the scene but we also give super manual ways for stupid people like me <laughs> who who really like detail i spend that uh, i I was spending hours like in other software. Now I spend hours in RPG stories to create like the trap uh, in the dungeon, the exact way I have imagined it. Although we have traps, you can just click and place a trap. Okay. But you know, I, I, it's what people um, enjoy. So we, and we don't sell assets. And that's a promise that we made uh, since day one. So it's an one-off pricing. No subscription, you get RPG stories. There are two different versions. It's the GM version, which basically addresses the, the game masters, the dungeon masters, where you can uh, host a game or you can play as a player and you can you have access to the world builder. And it, there's the player version, half the price, which is for the players, for people who think there will never be a dungeon master, where they can use a demo of the world builder and see how it works uh, in case they decide to upgrade at some point and they can create the character and join an online game hosted by a by a dm uh and it's one of we don't charge for models you cannot find models to buy at some point we want to introduce with now with the wrath of devs that's the plan we want to introduce uh, a 3d uploader for people who want to upload their own models um, that's one of the goals we have in this campaign, in this new Kickstarter. Um, and as we always say, when we will sell models, if we ever sell models, there will be models that we create and there will be really specific themes. So an example I always like to give is right now you can open RPG stories and build a whole um, a dungeon in a desert, a village in a desert, a town in a desert, an arena in a desert. Basically, you could play Daxan. But these desert buildings and desert um, plants and environments and grounds are kind of generic. They don't have a specific art style. So we might sell at some point a specific Daxan package, but we will never sell essential models like you know, like tables or castles or dungeons or things like that. So if we ever sell anything on Steam, like um, a DLC, it will be something really, really specific. So now in in the Wrath of Devs uh, campaign, uh, we introduce um, a super specific themed package for uh, Roman Empire and Ancient World. So basically it will be a package that you will be able to play in, you know, in during the Roman Empire era, which means Rome, Greece, uh, Egypt, Carthage, models that can support this. And by models, I mean everything you, you're going to need, um, characters, uh, monsters, uh, buildings, nature, Mediterranean nature. Um, so that's something really specific, and that's why we bring in in the Kickstarter, um, but no, you you don't. It's not like you buy RPG stories from Steam and then you need to buy models. That's not the case. Yeah, this isn't Games Workshop. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. And oh. I, to, to be one hundred percent transparent, one unique thing RPG stories has, and that's our model, basically, is that everything you do in RPG stories, you can write your quests, you can build your quests everything you do you can export them in one file 
uh, which means that you can create a quest, a pre-built quest, and pass it to another user of RPG Stories. So what we aim to do is, first of all, we give all our exports commercially free. That means anyone who's using RPG Stories can um, create maps, create quests, and sell them. We, we don't ask for anything. We don't hunt them down. We don't care about copyright. But that's our model as well. We want to bring people in and then sell our stories. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who don't like to build, they can always go in our um, <clears throat> website and get a quest and play. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned make you mentioned making custom dice for certain games like Hero Quest or like the Year Zero engine. <coughs> oh. There's a few games that are in my library that utilize cards, like playing cards. And of course, playing cards are often, are often used in, stu in stuff like Savage Worlds for initiative. Um, yeah. Would, would playing <coughs> card-based resolution be something that RPG stories could handle? <laughs> I wish my uh, lead developer was in, that, uh, in this interview right now. Uh, uh, so here's the thing. Let's break down the Wrath of Devs campaign a little bit, because this is exactly why we are going again uh, on Kickstarter. So anyone who uh, sees our Kickstarter, what they're going to see is that we propose to our seasoned users uh, some uh, an expansion, basically. Um, we ask them to give us to pledge again, and we give us a reward, 5,000 more models for really specific themes like um, the Roman Empire I already said, Star Wars, we don't call it Star Wars officially, but it is Star Wars. <laughs> um, um, dark Cyberpunk, because it's a style that we don't really support. And we are also bringing in uh, nowadays modern era uh, uh, and superhero uh, models. So that's for the models. The second thing we propose are character sheets for most popular games and rule sets. So when it comes to rule sets, what we say, what, what we will say in the campaign, it launches on the 16th of April. What we are saying is that we, we, we've placed stretch goals. So if we make enough money, the dream is to create um, a customizable system based on uh, on deck of cards, basically. So all the rules will be with cards for every game, and you will also be able to create your own and pass them around in the VTT, um, influence the dice according to the card you use. It's a unique design that we've thought of, and it's our biggest goal to create this we we call it card system, but basically you will be able to manipulate UI assets to create your own rule sets, pass them around, pass them on Steam Workshop. And obviously there, there will be templates for famous games like Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, Call of Cthulhu, things like that. But that means that anyone could take one um, UI asset, one card, let's say, and change rules without coding, obviously, everything will be with drop downs and point and click. So yeah, that's the ultimate goal. It's the um, highest stretch we have in this campaign. And it's it's the dream. Things like that are really expensive to be done, uh, to be fair. Um, and I don't want to sound um, weird, but we hope that the community will trust us this time and we will get a budget to really really deliver what we're dreaming of because the rule sets were a stretch goal in our first Kickstarter campaign that we missed and you know uh, and we want to take it this time that that's the goal mm -hmm. i can i can certainly get that um, yeah. now with with that in with that in mind I, th I think one of the other hurdles that can happen with th with um virtual tabletop in 3d form is um get is getting people it getting people to understand how th how things work and to that end do you and may, maybe you already have so so t so keep that in mind have you developed a for a form of tutorial or has or has somebody already beaten you to the punch when it comes to that with 
Are well, we have to we have tutorials in our YouTube channel, but recently, recently, like three or four months ago, we introduced um, the tip system. Basically, it's a smart system that identifies what you're doing in the software. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you uh, open the collection of buildings, let's say, right? So the system recognizes that, oh, this user is in the building. So it starts giving you tips and hotkeys on, on how to do things faster, smarter ways, gives you advice. Um, so in the bottom left, you always get tips about everything. So it's like a, um, a smart tutorial system that I see the system sees what you're trying to do and gives you the right tips. And we keep improving it uh, because we see the analytics, we see where people struggle and where they spend more time trying to figure out things. Um, so we, co we constantly update the tips. And that's a good pass because although RPG Stories is a 3D VTT, we are also introducing now 2D upload. Mm -hmm. So, um, and actually, I today I got the, the, the dev build with that and I was testing it. So we allow people to um, go to top view, upload their own uh, maps, 2D maps, and play the exact way they play in Foundry or, I don't know, Roll20 or whatever. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because we we wanted to show first we have a thing for artists so there are a lot of people out there who create maps 2d maps so why not support them uh, another vtt that you know people can use their art uh, second we know that most people have already spent a lot of money to maps to to you know create maps buy maps pay patreons things like that um, and also we we understand how important it is for people to use maps in the games. Like, you know, you have your own homebrew world, you have created a wonderful world map and you cannot show it through in RPG stories. So we allow 2D gaming as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes maybe a dungeon master is bored to build, although we have a lot of automatic ways and we introduce more now. Uh, maybe they just want to play um, um, a quest they already played somewhere else. So, you know, drag and drop your 2D images, bring the tokens in, play. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. And with that, with that, in, with that in mind, when it comes... When it comes to... When it comes when it comes to um, build when it comes to building, we talked about engines earlier. Is it is this a case is this a case where um, engines that is this engine that you guys use is it one that is relatively easy to import models into? So we're using Unity. Um, the way we implement we the devs meaning because I'm not a dev by the way I'm I'm, I'm the designer uh, and producer um, I pay the bills basically <laughs> so yeah um, the way we do it is that we have created a system in Unity a database and we have two wonderful people who take the assets um, play a little bit with the texture and they implement them in. Now, with the Wrath of Devs, we want to propose the 3D uploader. Um, it will be really easy. Basically, you will get an interface to upload your FBX or probably FBX and OBJ and save it in your collection. The problem with allowing people to upload things, and that's the biggest problem because it's really easy to... Um, create an uploader. I mean, we have done it. We've tested it. The problem is that you cannot control what the users are going to do and how much data then they will be, uh, you need to transfer in the multiplayer. So let's say we allow you to upload your own models and you are a crazy guy that doesn't really understand how things work and you upload something with one million polygons and then you copy paste it in your 3D scenes in your 3D scene like 100 times. And then you go online and we transfer all this data to the other users. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that will destroy the company basically because uh, we pay servers right and all these servers are um, they're billing you with the data that you transfer so you have to find ways to control uh, how the users are going to behave to place limits to find smart ways to transfer that data to the other users because if you upload something the other user doesn't have it somehow the other user they they need to see the thing you uploaded but they don't have it in your in their pc so these are things that are tricky we are working on them we're doing tests uh but we are really active in a discord server and we have implemented models from people who really need them we we do favors like that so someone might come and say hey i really need this model you don't have it in your library and i have created can you please implement it we do things like that we are really active with our fans and our backers and we help a lot mm -hmm. um, more more than someone could consider normal <laughs> we are really active mm -hmm. now with that said what do you have planned for the launch date for the wrath of devs expansion and how plan do you, how long do you have plan on having that particular crowdfund run so um, let me check the calendar because I always forget the last day. So we launched on the 16th of April and the campaign will end by the uh, 10th of May. So it's not the 30 days, it's a little bit less. Um, it's a new trend actually not to keep it a whole month and we're going to follow it uh we launched on the 16th there will be some early birds uh and basically we call our season users to come and pledge for the uh, expansion and we will also have uh, pledges for newcomers where we are going to give uh, a package of of the original version and the expansion at a massive discount so we are really trying to to bring new people in. Uh, obviously, uh, since RPG Stories is already released, they can always go and buy it through Steam and then come and pledge for the expansion. Um, and that's the reason we also we also give the, um, the, the the massive discount to bring people in the Kickstarter. And that's a good thing with the Wrath of Devs because th there's no waiting time. So the, the campaign ends. We deliver the keys to everyone and all the promises uh, from this Kickstarter will be coming via monthly updates. So we have almost everything ready because we are, we think we will get, we will get funded. So um, the new models are ready and they're waiting to be implemented. Um, the system for the character seats is almost ready. So, you know, um, we will deliver the keys right away to newcomers. And, you know, the first month, the first models will appear. The second month, more models. The third month, character seats. So it will be a fast process. It's not another campaign that you go and pledge and then you have to wait for two years. Um, and as we say in our ads, that with no waiting time, what are you waiting for? I mean, uh, support us. Basically, it's a call to newcomers. Um, and I hope that, you know, we will get our chance to work uh, with a true budget this time. Uh, because we've we've seen competitors making like a lot of funds. Um, and we wish we get that opportunity to work uh, more with better conditions, let's say, mm -hmm. and have the freedom to actually do exactly what we want to do. And we feel positive we, because, you know, this one year and a half, we delivered everything that we promised, actually more than that. Uh, we we feel we earned the trust. And here we are, the Wrath of Devs. And that's why the name as well. It's, you know, we, we want to do it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But yeah. with that said... I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. <laughs> I'll do it again. And thank you very much. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I yeah, always say I around here, 
Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Well said. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>